Did you ever wonder how they make metallic paint? Welcome back, friends. So today I'm going to attempt to describe how metallic paints are made. And then we're going to also talk about how they stick to your brayer. That paint sticks to your brayer and you can't get it clean. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to, we're going to also make some prints. So let's just get to it. Okay, so as promised, <laughs> we are going to play with metallics. So my favorite to work with is actually this one which is an iridescent bronze fine. Unfortunately, I only have a little bit left of this um, and I never, my bigger bottle is empty completely. So anyway, we're just gonna work with this a little bit. I also have iridescent copper fine. And another one of my favorites is iridescent pearl fine. So you might be wondering, what does this fine mean? So there in, in order to make this metallic or, or it's not really probably there's not really metal in here um, in some cases there might be but no this one says iron oxide coated mica particles and this also says that and this one also says that so okay so what exactly are mica powders so you know these these pigments actually may vary in like the, the particle size. So you might have like a really fine, small particle, or there might be chunkier ones. So fine is actually referring to the size of the particles in the mica powders that have been added to paint. And there supposedly is a way to make your own metallic paints with these. I have not played with that yet. So also there's binders. So there's, there could be like a binder that holds a pigment together and adheres, it helps it adhere to the surface. So this might actually affect your brayer. It might be a little bit harder to clean. Also, if it gets stuck to the plate, it also might be a little harder to clean. Um, best way to pick it up off the plate is with more paint, in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, so one of the reasons why I might want to make my own paint is, as you can see, they come in many beautiful colors, um, these mica powders, but you very rarely see these colors in a bottle of paint, you know, like this. You don't really see. I would love a blue iridescence. But one of the reasons why I like this paint, this pearl fine, iridescent pearl fine, is when I mix it with like a transparent color, it takes on the, the metallic. Um, really beautiful. So we're gonna show you that today. Also, um, sometimes these look really good against darker colors. So like an alizarin crimson hue is a beautiful background for any of the golds. Um, I'm going to try some Payne's Gray because I think that would also be offset the metallics really well. This is way too transparent to use with that, but maybe when mixed with another color. And also copper. Copper and the Payne's Gray might be beautiful together. So I happen to have that in both not much left in here either, um, in both Golden and in the Liquitex, Liquitex Basics. Now I also have this bottle. I have a couple of these. And I was using these to mix in with um, like acrylic pores to really make the pores kind of glisten, add a little bling. I don't know how well this particular brand of paint is going to work on the plate. We'll do that at the end because if things should get ruined, I want to keep moving. So we're going to try that at the end. Uh, might be, I might be surprised. We'll see. I have a feeling this is going to be thin and not pull very well, but I might be wrong. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to start by creating 
some dark backgrounds. And then we'll use stencils with the metallics. So like I said, the brayer will get, because of those mica powders, your, if you, once it builds up on the brayer, it is really going to be hard to clean. I've experienced that before. So it's hard sometimes to mix your session when you're using metallics and then like immediately after you're trying to just do a regular print because sometimes your brayer is so like chunky with these particles that um, you know you can't you can't get them off. I'm going to use plain copy paper today. Okay, so now let's start with, let's try the copper over this. Now let's go with this copper. Make sure we get this nice and clean. So these fluid paints from Golden really do cling to the plate nicely. This one looks like it works just as well as the bronze. Okay, so I'm going to go over this. Gorgeous, huh? That's a great color combination. Payne's gray and copper. Okay, so now we have a ghost. I'm going to try to pick that up with some of this blue tissue paper that I have. I'm going to put the smooth side down. I don't have any black tissue. I don't know what I did with it, but black tissue would have been perfect for this. So this had a smooth side and a rough side, and I went with the, oh, it's not coming up. We got very faint, very, very faint. I don't even know if you can see that on camera. So I could probably try to pick that up with one of the other darker colors. 
very dry. So I'm going to try to pick this up with a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Because it's a beautiful ghost. We don't want to waste it. And you can see the brayer is nice and metallic right now. <laughs> That's all those fine particles clinging to the brayer. Nice. And I think it might be nice to also overlay another stencil on top of that. So I'm going to use this as a background for the next, or for one of the next ones. Okay, so let's actually, let us try a little bit of this bronze on top of the copper on that particular one. It's so beautiful. It is a beautiful paint. I think everybody falls in love with this one when they use it once. It's uh, probably the best of all of the metallics. Okay, I am going to lay down a different stencil. And we're going to go over this one. Try to get in between with my fingers. Now we have another ghost that we have to deal with. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt like the last time. I'm going to let this dry and we will pick it up with something else. I have this dried really fast. I am going to put carbon black. I'm going to want something with black. I always want something black. This should look very rich, I'm hoping. Okay, so that copper, I mean, no. The original copper one that I did was with this one. Then I followed it up with the iridescent bronze and that's what we're picking up now with the black but I think we should try this to see how well it it does on the plate so we'll do that next and then we'll do something with the iridescent pearl and that is a beautiful gold texture not enough black for me. I would need to put something black on top of it as well. And maybe we'll do that. All right, let's try this one. So this one it is not covering as nicely as the golden fluid. I mean, I've got something here, but it's not 
covering quite the same. Let's put that over here. I think the winner for me is the Iridescent Copper Fine by Golden. Yeah, I don't have a lot of contrast here, but hopefully you can see that. It's pretty, subtle. I'm going to try to just pick this up. This is picking up on the tissue better than the other one did. This was the other one, the ghost barely picked up. I am going to try something with, now this is very transparent as you can see. This is just going to make a really subtle pattern uh, and it reactivated the black on my brayer. I'm curious to see what it's going to do on here. All right, so let's see if we overlay that on here. And we'll use this other stencil. different kinds of actually the pearl an iridescent pearl is not as subtle as I thought it was going to be but you do see the copper underneath it and it looks very silver here okay I'm going to let this dry and then we will pick it up with um, a dark color and then we might overlay it with a yellow pearl mixture. I'll be back in a minute. I think it's dry enough. We're going to put some alizarin crimson down. So if we look really close, you could see, you could almost see those particles in there. So in order to clean this really well, we have to use Murphy's oil soap, soak it maybe even overnight. I always add um, warm water to a bin and then put a generous amount, like maybe even Depend, I have to get exact measurements of like, you know, how much Murphy's oil soap to the water. Um, and I'll put it in the description below. But um, I then kind of swirl it around and mix it, dip this in there, leave it like overnight. And then this just peels right off. It's, it's fantastic. Got a nice little scab over here. Anyway, let's try to mix 
this with a little bit of yellow. We'll put the yellow right over this. It kind of like made a little sunburst. Can you see that that, that might look better with gold? I'm going to pick that up with this. That is much prettier. Now, if we mix a little bit of this with, let's say, magenta, just a little bit of magenta, and we just print on white, look at this pretty color we're getting. I'm just going to take, actually, I'm going to take a piece of rice paper. See that pretty metallic color that you get? And I'm just going to try to pick this up with a piece of deli paper. And it's not coming up. Well, it came up a little bit, but we have a lot left on the plate. So I'm going to pick this up. Mm, let's see. I'm going to pick it up with some Payne's Gray. And then after this, we will try these other Sargent Art acrylic paints that are metallic. I don't expect that they will be good, but I might be wrong. I might be pleasantly surprised. Ooh. This is a very pretty combination. Can you see that? Okay, let's try one of these. I'm gonna start with the gold gold. This really is like gold gold. Let me try shaking first. In case it has like a transparent properties. Well, actually this might be nice. 
don't know. See how transparent looking it, it is? So I don't know if this is going to work. All right, let's see. I didn't make it a background. So I'm going to do the blue tissue. Actually, I think that would have worked well. Let it, I'm going to let it dry. We'll pick it up with a nice dark color like the Payne's Gray. I think this is going to take a little longer to dry than this. And I have two other colors. This one is called an Aztec Gold. It's a little, uh, a little warmer. Like this one's like pure, like real gold. This one's like a burnt gold or something. It's and this one's an antique gold, which is kind of like the bronze. So we'll see how that works. I'm going to let it dry. I said I'm going to pick this up with Payne's Gray. Actually, that paint works pretty good. Um, all right, let us, I'm gonna make some backgrounds real quick. Okay, so I created a few backgrounds for us to play with, and now we're ready to go back to playing with our golds, our metallics. All right, so let, let us try this. This is, a, it's not quite copper, as you can see, not quite, it, but it is warmer than the other gold. I'm going to shake it up like I did the other one. This is a very fluid paint. I'm going to try using a different brayer. So again, this is not, it's very metallic. Um, but it's like the paint itself is very thin. It's almost like they just mixed mica powders with gel medium or something. It's very thin. So this is a Payne's Gray background. definitely a very metallic paint, but it doesn't seem to have the binders that the golden paint does. I'm going to try to get in those openings a little bit better. I tried this with the, with the last one and it didn't work, but let's just see. Actually, it worked pretty good. This might make really nice transparent collage paper. We have a little bit of gold still on the plate. That, that, ooh. This is like very similar 
to the bronze. So my stencil still had a lot, but it, this paint does not dry as fast. So the stencil still had a lot of paint on it. And it transferred to the print. Not terrible. Okay, so let's talk about conclusions um, while you watch me make this last couple of prints. So my, my conclusion is the bronze, the, the iridescent bronze from Golden is still the best. This, that's what I'm laying down here and you can see how beautifully it covers the plate very evenly. And that last, that Sargent paint had the same sort of color, that bronzy color, but it was not uh, it, it didn't have the binders or something. Something was missing. It just wasn't sticking to the plate quite the same as the golden paints. And so definitely the golden fluid uh, iridescent bronze fine is worth every penny. It's not cheap, but it's worth it because look at the beautiful print that you get. I, I just love it. It's, and against this, uh, I think this was Qu Quinacridone Red. It is gorgeous. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to create, inspire, and share. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.